the last page can i even look at it nah can't do it <laughs> i can't do it hi there my name is catherine i hope you're doing well i've been putting off making this video for so long <laughs> because i'm scared i'm scared that i'm gonna make this video and then tomorrow I'm going to read a book that becomes my favourite book of all time. But because I already made this video, I won't be able to include it on this list. And that devastates me. And it, it all will happen because that's the way the world works. Today I'm going to be taking you through some of my favourite books of all time. Subject to change. I hopefully have many more years of my life to come. And there may be books that I've already read that don't make this list. But maybe in a few years they will be. We are growing, we are evolving. I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. So as of today, these are some of my favourite books of all time. Let's go. So I've got a few short stories that I'm going to start off with before I talk about books. Although I'm not a big short story reader, there are a few short stories that I've read that I honestly still think about a lot. Interestingly enough, this shows how much of a not short story reader I am. All four of the short stories that I'm going to mention here, I read during university. Who knows if I would have picked these up myself. The first one being The Great God Pan by Arthur Mackin. This is one of the best things I've ever read in my life. It's horror, fantasy, heavily featuring the occult. It was published in 1894 and at the time did not have a very good reputation with the press as it was denounced as degenerate and horrifying because of the like sexual content and themes that are prevalent in it but is now renowned as one of the classics of the horror genre. This book is about an experiment gone wrong on a woman named Mary who is given the ability to see beyond the veil into the supernatural side of our world. This has some severe consequences leading to a series of mysterious deaths and events that our main characters are trying to get to the bottom of. I haven't read very many classics and I think that's because because a lot of the classics that you're expected to read can be quite heavy and you kind of have to commit to fall into the style of writing and everything but with this short story I found it so easy to fall into it. I don't know if it's because I'm into cults and horror, particularly folk horror anyway, which will become clear as we progress through this video. Cults feature a lot <laughs> in the books I like, but I do just think this is one of the most accessible classics I've read. It's a short story, so it's quick to get through and it's really, really excellent. If you like Piranesi, <laughs> which may or may not be mentioned on later. I would say this would be a great book to read alongside Piranesi. There's just something that links the two together in my mind. Like I think of Piranesi, I think of Great God Pan, I think of Great God Pan, I think of Piranesi. It's exquisite. So the next short story I love to bits is The Blue Road, A Fairy Tale by Wade Compton, which I originally read in an anthology of post-colonial science fiction short stories and that collection was called So Long Been Dreaming Post-Colonial Science Fiction and Fantasy. I don't have a copy of this short story and I was just looking online and I think Wade Compton has has now adapted the short story into graphic novel form and has made some changes in it to market it towards children I think. He's changed the main character in the short story from a man to a woman interestingly so I really need to get my hands on a copy and I would love to get the graphic novel but this short story is amazing. It's a fantasy short story about a man who comes from the great swamp of ink and sets off on a journey for a better life along the blue road and is challenged by various obstacles along the way. This story has themes of post-colonialism and explores immigration. The prose of it and the world of it is so magical. I just remember reading it and just being in awe at the writing. It was the kind of writing that you just want to disappear into. It's beautiful. I love it so much. I really want to get a copy of it. I kind of want to get a copy of the original as well as this adapted graphic novel because the art looks beautiful and I'm interested to see how he adapted it. I think he's saying that the original story is feels quite dark and hopeless and I agree with that. But I think he's made it in the graphic novel a bit more hopeful with the whole message of 
being able to start your life over again somewhere new. It's a stunning, stunning short story and I cannot recommend it enough. Next short story I'm going to recommend is Love in a Fallen City by Eileen Chang, translated by Karen S. Kingsbury. This book is literally falling apart. I need to get a replacement copy of this. This has um, other short stories in it which I haven't read but the one I have read is Love in a Fallen City and it follows an unlikely couple who find true romance as bombs fall on Hong Kong during the Second World War. The writing in this story is beautiful. The prose is absolutely stunning. It's so lyrical. I think that's what's so masterful about it because this story is about two people falling in love and Eileen Chang writes so viscerally that you feel those feelings and falling in love at the same time. If you like beautiful prose, read Love in a Fallen City and you won't regret it. And then the last short story that I want to mention is Brokeback Mountain by Annie Pro, which I do have a copy of and I thought I brought upstairs, but I don't know where it is. <laughs> don't know where I put it. This is a romance between two men, Ennis and Jack, who are ranch hands and who end up acting on this attraction they feel to each other and then explores how their relationship evolves over the following years. You might have seen the film which is also really really good. If you've seen the film and liked it and haven't read the short story you should read the short story. I loved it so, so much and um, just as much as the film. Again, the prose in this is just really, really beautiful and explores this complex relationship between these two men who live in a society at a time that will not accept their love for each other. I, mean, I think maybe we did it in our first year of uni. So it has been a good few years since I've read it, but how much I enjoyed reading it has stuck with me. That is definitely one of the best short stories I've ever read. So those are the short stories I wanted to mention. Now we can get into the books. Starting off with Act Your Age, Eve Brown by Talia Hibbert. This is the third book in Talia Hibbert's trilogy of the Brown sisters. Eve is the third Brown sister and she's my favourite. I love her and I love her romance in this book. Eve is a character who isn't quite sure what she wants to do in life. She's a bit of a mess in that sense but she's not untalented. She's a really hard worker and really passionate about helping others and when she ends up accidentally running over a man called Jacob and breaking his arm she kind of forces her way into his life and the B&B &B he runs and helps him with the B&B &B while his arm is broken and they fall in love. <laughs> Jacob is autistic and likes things done in certain ways and Eve kind of comes in and turns his world upside down but in a really good way. This is one of the best romance books I've ever read. Talia Hibbert does spice so well. This is one of the sexiest books I've ever read without being crass, if you know what I mean. I love them so much. <laughs> They're so cute and I love them, I love them, I love them. If you haven't read any Talia Hibbert, what are you doing? She is so good. She's one of the best romance writers about. Next book I love is The Song of Achilles by Madeline Miller. I do really like a new take on a myth but this one is just, it stands miles above the rest for me. It's romantic, it's heartbreaking, it's lyrical, it stays true to the original myth while still making it feel really modern and fresh. This is fundamentally a love story between Achilles and Patroclus and follows them from their childhoods, their first meeting and and shows their relationship as they grow older, culminating in the events of Troy. <laughs> I'm just remembering how this book reads. I don't cry much at books. I cried at the end of this book. TV shows, movies, I'll cry so easily, but books, I don't cry that easily. And this one did it. This one really... The last page... Can I even look at it? Nah, can't do it. <laughs> I can't do it. This is so good. If you're wanting to read a retelling of a Greek myth, read this one. You probably already have. Read it again. Next book is a book that I read for uni and ended up falling in love with. I've only read it once. Plot wise, I can't fully remember, but it still makes this list because it has stuck with me. I remember where I was when I was reading it. I was obsessed with it. I will definitely reread it in the future. I need to get a nicer copy of it because I think it used to be, yeah, it used to be a library book. It's got that like filmy protective cover on it, but it is Wounded by Percival Everett. This is about John and his uncle Gus who are black horse trainers 
miners who live in Wyoming and when a brutal murder of a young gay man occurs in the town they live in, tensions begin to arise in their community and forces John to reflect on why this has happened. Everett's writing in this is so engaging, so gorgeous and it really sets you in a place. I just remember reading it and just being like completely transported to the countryside in Wyoming, a place I've never been. I've never set foot anywhere in America. But this was written so well that I felt like I had been. It explores themes of racism, sexuality, hate crimes, and I really want to read more Percival Everett. I've said that since I first read this book and I haven't. Just because I don't really pick up literary fiction on my own, uni was quite good at forcing me to do that. So I would never find this book if it wasn't for my degree. And I'm so grateful for that because I love it. Next up, I'm gonna talk about Piranesi by Susanna Clarke, which I hinted at earlier. This book is one of the most unique books I've ever read in my life. I've never read a story like this. This book follows a man called Piranesi who lives in this labyrinth of a building with infinite rooms and corridors and statues that line the walls of different various animals and beings. He has no memory of where he comes from, of what his purpose there is, but as he begins to suspect that there was another person in this world before him, he starts to unravel the truth of how he got there and who he was and boy oh boy is it a story. I think if, I, if there was a gun held to my head I would say this is my favourite book of all time but there's not a gun okay so I didn't say it but I love this book a lot. I think about it so much like I think about this book at least once a week. It's stunning, stunning, gorgeous, Mwah. beautiful Look at that cover and it's short. It packs such a punch, trust me. Next book I love is not as short. It is Babel by RF Kuang. <sighs> Dark Academia at its finest. This book follows Robin, an orphan from Canton who is brought to London by a man named Professor Lavelle where he is trained in Greek, Latin, Chinese, all preparing him for the day he will enrol in Oxford University's Royal Institute, oh, what's it called? Royal Institute of Translation, otherwise known as Babel. At this institution, scholars use silver magical bars to find magic in the meanings of words and the lost meanings in translations of words. So we follow Robin as he starts his university career, makes three friends, has this lovely little group, is having a grand old time until the realities of the institute begin to come to light. Questions of power and imperialism come to the surface and it is truly incredible. It, I don't understand how someone can write a book this big that is so tight plot wise, character wise, world building wise. I just think it's exquisitely done. Everything in there just like stands so strongly on its own but also holds each other up. She includes footnotes throughout which gives some like deeper analysis into translations of words and stuff which is you ugh, saying it out loud sounds like it would be so boring but I was so oh there's a card in here yeah it sounds like it would be so boring but it's not it's so interesting I love this world I love the characters I love the friendship formed between these characters it's just a, a, a beautiful beautiful book to fall into exploring some really serious themes and topics and you can just when you read it you just know how passionate RF Kuang was about this book. You can just feel it. Next book. <laughs> a recent addition to my favourite books of all time is The Ballad of Never After by Stephanie Garber. I've talked about it before. I love it. This is the second book in the Once Upon a Broken Heart series by Stephanie Garber in the Caraval universe. I don't really like the Caraval series though so I'm not going to talk about that. The series follows Evangeline Fox who makes a deal with this godlike being called the Prince of Hearts, otherwise known as Jax. It's enemies to lovers, fantasy, fairy tale, whimsical, gorgeous, stunning. We love to see it. This is not a perfect book. Not everyone's gonna love this book and I understand why but this style of writing just speaks to my very soul. The amount of whimsy in it, the amount of heart and humour and silliness but also romance and tension. It's young adult but the tension between 
these two characters in this book specifically. Bitch. <laughs> I've only read it once. <laughs> but it was one of those books where I finished it and I was like, I need to open it back up straight away and read it again and again and again and again and again. I, I didn't, I, but I will be doing it in the future. I will read this again over and over again, probably. I love it. It's the best one in the series. I don't think anyone would really disagree with that. This is the best one in the series. Love it. Next one I want to talk about is Rouge by Mona Awaj. This is another really recent favorite. I read it towards the end of last year, but I don't have a copy of it right now because I lent it to my sister who read it and also loved it. Although she only gave it 4.75 stars. <laughs> the disrespect. But this book I think is best described as a gothic fairy tale set in California. It's about a woman called Belle who is obsessed with beauty, uh, beauty products, watching beauty videos, watching tutorials, things like that. And when her mum dies, has to head back home to California to deal with the funeral and everything and then gets all caught up in this mysterious cult that her mother was a part of that is obsessed with beauty too. It just turns into this wild whirlwind of craziness. The conclusion to this book, the like climax scenes of this book are is one of the best any to a book I've ever read. I loved it so much. Another cult. How many cult books can one gal have? Not enough. There is not enough. I need more. If you have any books that are culty, not non-fiction, although I'm not opposed to reading non-fiction, but I mean like, I want fiction cults that just do crazy things. Any recommendations of that, please. <laughs> I'm desperate for it. I'm hungry for it. I was just enraptured with this book. Enamored, in love. It's horrific. It's stunning. It's exciting. It's got a mystery at the centre of it. There is a prominent celebrity who's a part of it who... I'm not gonna spoil for you, but their presence in the book just elevates it to another level. It's just all about obsession, but also I think at the heart of it, it is all about the complex relationship between a mother and daughter, which is explored in a really gorgeous way. Next up is Book Lovers by Emily Henry. I couldn't not put an Emily Henry on here. I love that woman. One of my favourite romance authors. I'll read anything that she publishes. I say that. I think she's published young adult stuff that I haven't read, but anything adult that she's published. I'm not opposed to reading her young adult stuff either, but I just know that her adult stuff is going to be a hit. I've never not liked a book she's written. Book Lovers is a romance between Nora, a literary agent, and Charlie, a book editor who don't really get on. They have a bit of a tumultuous relationship but when Nora takes a break from work and heads to a small town, who happens to be there but Charlie? <laughs> what are the odds that she chooses the small town that Charlie is from? And they end up getting to know each other a bit more and falling in love. <laughs> it's not a spoiler, it's a romance, you know? This is my favourite Emily Henry book, probably. I also really like Beach Read, but I've not read Beach Read in so long. I think Book Lovers is my favourite. It's got the small town vibes that are super nice. It's got like a kind of enemies to lovers vibe to it as well. And I love romances centred within the book world. I like that she is an agent and he's an editor. Just, it's all very exciting to me. It's just stunning. I love it. Love it. I'm going to end on a few books that I loved when I was younger. So I've not read them in a while and they're behind me. The first book I want to mention is Anna and the French Kiss by Stephanie Perkins, which I think this might be my most reread book of all time. It was really popular on booktube back in the mid 2010s and I have a copy of it on my kindle that I have read countless countless times. It has another two books in the series too which are also great but this one is the one that gets me in. This is about a girl named Anna who is American but she is sent to a American boarding school in Paris for the year and she meets an English boy there, an English French boy there named Etienne. Etienne? <laughs> Etienne. Who might just be like one of my all time biggest crushes in a book. <laughs> He's a short king and it's about their romance in Paris in the school year and it's got some like teenage drama. It's a lot of fun and I'll always go back to this. I only just got a physical copy of this and the other two books recently and um, so I've never actually read it in physical form so I'm excited for my next reread of it. I love it. This gives summer vibes. 
I bet your bottom dollar as soon as spring comes around and it's nice enough to sit outside in the sun, I'll be reading this. Next, I just want to mention Sisters Grimm by Michael Buckley. This is the fifth book in the series, but the fifth book is my favourite. The covers of this are so beautiful. This is children's books. This isn't even young adult, this is children's books. But I love it. These altered my brain chemistry, changed my life forever. It's quite a long series, but they're short books. And this follows two young girls who are orphans who find out that they come from a family of fairy tale detectives when they move in with their grandmother to a town called Fairyport Landing where fairy tale characters are real and it's incredible. This was Once Upon a Time before Once Upon a Time was a TV show and if you just want to relive some of that joy that you had when you were a young child, read this book series, it's amazing. Incredible. How many times can I say incredible this video? I don't know. And then finally, I don't have a copy of these books, but I do want to mention the Infernal Devices series, which I've not read in a while. Clockwork Angel, Clockwork Prince, Clockwork Princess. I haven't read all of Cassandra Clare's works. I don't even know if I finished the Mortal Instruments instruments series and I'm definitely not caught up on her recent stuff. She's a bit touch and go for me of what I've read but Infernal Devices is by far the best series that she's come out with. It is set in early 1900s, it's got very much steampunk vibes. It follows a girl called Tessa Gray who stumbles into the world of shadow hunters which are basically demon hunters and meet two boys called Will and Jem who are best friends. Basically brothers but they're both hot and she finds herself drawn to both of them. Oh no! I don't get behind love triangles. I don't like them because I don't like the stress of them and there's always one boy I prefer over the other and I do prefer one of the boys in this book. <coughs> Will, <coughs> another book boy that I don't think I'll ever not be in love with. I love him so much but this is the only series where I like the other guy too. Jem is such a sweetheart and so lovely and there's no real hatred in the love triangle. They all kind of love each other but not in like a polyamory way. You just have to read it to know, you know? I just wanted to give a shout out to that book series because I remember reading that as a teenager and being like, wow, okay, this is what a fan to romance should be. And that's that. Those are some of my favourite books of all time. I hope you enjoyed watching this and I hope that I don't regret missing out any books on this list anytime soon. But if that happens, maybe I'll just make an updated video, you know? Let me know if you have any recommendations or some of your favourite books of all time below. I'd love to hear what everyone else is obsessed with and I hope you have an amazing upcoming week and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!